Hello and welcome to Marketing Speak. I'm your host, Stefan Spencer, and today I'm very excited to have Dave D. with us. Dave is the author of the book, Sales Stampede, which teaches business owners how to sell more of their products or services or get their very best prospects to schedule appointments through the art and science of virtual selling. I met Dave D., or actually, I don't know if we really spoke, but the first time I became acquainted with Dave was at a GKIC. Probably a super conference, which was an super event. Super conference, yeah. yes. I think that's what it was. And uh, Dan Kennedy was there, of course. It was fabulous, and Dave also rocked the audience. So I'm very excited to finally have Dave on this podcast. I just um, had another experience of uh, Dave's brilliance a few weeks ago at a uh, an event uh, run by Brian Kurtz, who was a recent guest on this podcast as well. Uh, that was his mastermind, and Dave and I were both speakers, and I just knew that I had to... I had to have Dave on the show. So thank you for joining us today. Hey, man, it's great to be here, Stefan. I appreciate it. Took like notes like crazy when you were talking at Kurtz's event. I mean, so uh, I'm really excited to be here. Yeah. So I'd love to have us start off by, first of all, the, the book Sales Stampede is such an important book because many marketers are kind of loath to to sell and to hit that closing point where now they need to ask for the money or make the offer and then their pitch of their voice gets higher, the <laughs> speed changes, they seem awkward on stage or in front of the camera on Zoom. What's up with that? <laughs> well, it's interesting because most, most folks like the teaching part of it, right? And so they think that um, and I used to think this too, if you just deliver really, really great content, right? If you just overwhelm the audience, whether it's a virtual audience or an in-person audience, doesn't matter. If you just overwhelm them with content, they're just going to want to buy your product. In fact, you, you mentioned Dan Kennedy earlier. Um, uh, Dan actually invited me to speak on one of his stages years and years, about 15 years ago. Because uh, I had really great success. I used to be a professional magician. That's what I used to do for a living. And following some of Dan's principles, I went from doing three shows a month to 25 shows a month in less than 90 days. And so Dan said, hey, you got to come tell your story um, about how you're selling your professional service, which was entertainment at that time, and tell the story. He said, the only caveat is that you have to sell a product at the end. And so for your listeners who don't know, the way a lot of those seminars work is the speaker goes up on stage, does a presentation, sells something at the end, and then splits the sales with the promoter. So that's that's how it works. And that's how a lot of the promoters make their money. It's really not on ticket sales. It's on the person who's speaking. So, Stefan, I was like so cocky about this because I was an entertainer and I was on stage all of the time. So I'm like, this is going to be easy. And I saw other speakers who were making like 50000 even $100,000 from one presentation. And so I went up there, man, with my presentation and I entertained the audience. They were laughing, they were clapping, they were doing everything right. And then I do my close and I'm doing the quotation marks, the air quotes there, because it wasn't even a close, right? I, I thought if I just said, hey, I've got this thing. And so I was expecting this sales stampede, this stampede of people to rush to the back of the room like I saw other speakers do. And what happened was people did go to the back of the room, but they were going to the back of the room to leave to go to the bathroom. I mean, honestly, it was it was ugly, man. And I barely sold anything. And I was I, I couldn't really figure it out. I just knew I was upset. I let my mentor down, right? Because, you know, he didn't make any money from it. And I let myself down because I pictured all of this money coming in. And so I had to make it really going to learn how to do this speaking to sell. Um, or was I just going to continue to be an entertainer? And I, I really knew that I could make an impact on people's lives and, and make more money from being, uh, from learning really to teach and sell. And so I really dove headfirst into it. I developed my own system through trial and error and coaching and using a lot of different, some esoteric strategies to come up with my own system. Fast forward two years after I've been working on smaller events and getting some great results and doing 
teleseminars. There weren't even webinars back then. Okay, this is how long I've been doing this, right? This was teleseminars, but using the same system on teleseminars and getting results for myself and for clients. And so then Dan invited me back to speak at the same event two years later because it was an annual event. And he said, this time though, Dave, we're not going to put you on main stage because Stefan, when you screw up, right, when you don't sell well, they don't put you back on main stage right away. And so they put me in a breakout session, literally like in the basement of this hotel room at like eight o'clock in the morning. It was ugly. But I had an audience of about maybe a hundred, a little over a hundred, but I knew now how to structure a presentation that closed. And um, I, when the dust cleared from that one, I went from doing, um, I, I, I went from almost no sales to doing $330,000 in sales in just 75 minutes. Now I didn't get, remember you got to split that with the promoter, but still, you know, I don't know what other people's hourly rate is, but 150 K for 75 minutes work, I thought was pretty good. And so I was really hooked on it. And so I wanted to really start teaching other people how to do it as well. That's impressive. And I know keynoters who are like the big name celebrities, somebody like Malcolm Gladwell or Arianna Huffington, they might be charging 50 grand, 75 grand, 100 grand for a keynote. And then they're not selling anything at the end. You actually made more than most of those celebrities would make in an hour, hour and a half presentation. And you had the opportunity to have lifelong fans and and uh, so much more customer lifetime value than just that the, the, the first initial sale. A hundred percent, because when you speak to sell, and it doesn't matter what you're selling, by the way. So most of the folks that I work with are not selling like an information product like I was, right? They're they're professional services providers. So they're doing webinars or in-person presentations to get their prospects, their audience members to schedule a consultation with them, which they'll then close during the consultation, right? But it's the same structure. You're, you're selling something. And the truth is, What you just said is even more important than the money. The best customer or client or patient that you get is from speaking. Uh, So if I look at the lifetime value of the clients that I get who I acquired from speaking, it's infinitely higher than from Facebook or from any other form of uh, marketing. And the reason is because there's a bond that is created when they see you speak, whether it's again, virtually or it's in person. And I don't even think I answered your question because I get excited. I get excited about this stuff because I just, this stuff really just changes. It can really change your life if you, if you, if you get it. So the question was, why do people get scared? Well, first of all, they don't know how to structure their presentation. So it actually leads naturally to people wanting to buy, to create the desire inside of people to want to buy what you're selling, to want to schedule a consultation with you. And then the second thing is they've got a hang up about selling, you know, well, I, you know, I, they, they just don't feel good about it because they think it's manipulative or they, they, they've got the wrong impression of it. And by the way, it can be manipulative, but one of my favorite sayings is that the difference between manipulation and persuasion is intent. So if it is someone's intent to sell something to an audience that doesn't work, that's not right for them then that's manipulation, right? And that person is a snake oil salesman. And unfortunately, there's a lot of snake oil salesmen, especially in the world that you know we're involved in. But if your intent is to help somebody, and you've got a product, you've got a service that can really help someone get the outcome that they desire, then as Jay Abraham says, I think you've got a moral obligation to do everything that you can to make that sale. And it's really just a shift in the mindset. Uh, but if you yeah. structure the entire presentation right, the close is just, and it doesn't matter if you're selling one-to-one or if you're selling one-to-many, the, the close is just a natural part of the entire process. It's not an event, right? It's not an event. It's just part of the entire process. And in one yeah, to many It's, it's sell- really a non-event, right? The more you make it an event, then the more pressure you put on yourself, the more awkward the transition and the more you sabotage yourself from that moral obligation, as as Jay Abraham says. Yeah, you're 100% right. It, it's not an event, and it's just a natural part of the process. But what people don't understand is that the uh, when you're de- developing a one-to-many presentation, 
right? So whether you're doing it on a webinar or a video or in person, doesn't make any difference. The entire presentation's a close. So everything that you say, every word, every slide that you show if you're using slides needs to lead to the outcome that you desire, whether that's to get somebody to take out their credit card or whether it's to get somebody to schedule time on the calendar uh, to meet with you. So the entire presentation is a close. And that means that where you start, by the way, in creating your presentation is you actually start with the close. You start with the end. Everyone who I know who creates presentations, left they've studied with me, starts at the beginning, right? And they do all they do their opening and their content and all of that stuff. And then they get then they then they do their close. No. Just like great copywriters, I think it was Gary Halbert who who said um, that a lot of times he would create the order form first before even writing the sales letter. He'd create the order form first because that would tell him what he needs to put in the sales letter to create the desire in people. So, right. And so you want to start by developing your clothes first. You develop that and the, that's the very first thing that you develop. Then you loop around because now we've, as, as I'm quoting everybody here, as the late Stephen Covey said, we now begin with the end in mind. What is the outcome that we want? Yeah. And it, it was really cool, by the way. That's what you asked me before we started recording this. You said, hey, what is the outcome that you want from this? Right. Exactly. And so that's exactly what you got to be focused on. What is the outcome? What is the offer? And then, OK, now what can I say? What can I talk about that is going to lead the audience to want to take advantage of the offer or the opportunity that I'm presenting to them? Yeah. And it's a it's a storytelling process, right? It's not just facts and figures and filling their heads with information. It's about taking them on this hero's journey. Yeah, that's that's a hundred percent that's a hundred percent correct. And again, and it's not about delivering too much information. So the the biggest mistake that I see people make is that they deliver too much content. And what happens is two bad things happen. They think that they're doing the audience a service by giving them a ton of content, but they're actually doing the audience a disservice. And here's why. Number one, when you deliver so much content during a presentation, your audience gets overwhelmed, right? There's just too much. They can't process it. And when an overwhelmed audience doesn't take action, right? Someone who's just confused and overwhelmed doesn't take action. The second bad thing that happens is you give your audience members the false impression that they have the information that they need to get the outcome that they desire, to solve the problem that they have. And truly, unless you're selling the simplest thing on the planet, there's no possible way that you can deliver all the information that somebody needs in 75 minutes or 90 minutes or two hours to get them the result that they desire. And so my big rule of thumb is that you want to have three pieces of content, three major things. Now, under each one of those three major headings, you can talk about multiple things. But as you said, it's not just facts and figures. It's storytelling. It's using case studies right? It's using demonstration. You did it beautifully, by the way, with your presentation at Kurtz's event. Now, we were do both doing teaching presentations. We weren't there to sell anything, right, right. overtly. But obviously, right, th there was an outcome that both of us desired from speaking at that event. And so the, what you did so brilliantly is you, you used demonstration. So you said, okay, everybody, go put your website into this particular uh, tool. And it came up with the results. And you look and you're like, holy crap, right? So my website sucks. It's got such a low score. And so the beautiful thing about that is that through that demonstration, it's way better than you telling me that, well, uh, I'm just making up numbers now. 75% of websites uh, are doing this wrong and this wrong and this wrong. When I go in and I put my own website in, right, and I get the results right there, I'm like, wow, right? And so that's a form of engagement. You got to get your audience engaged through stories. You got to get your audience engaged through different devices. And we can talk about that because it's one of the most powerful 
uh, pieces of the persuasion puzzle is something I call compliance, is getting the audience to do what you ask them to do. So all of that's of, of so importance. And it's got to be entertaining. Mm. Um, I often ask my audiences, who makes more money, an entertainer or a teacher? Right? <laughs> exactly. Right? And, and it's an entertainer. So you've got to be entertained. That doesn't mean you need to tell jokes, right? Now, it is great to make the audience laugh, but even if you're not funny, you can do that with images on your slides and things like that. But you've got to be entertaining. And so just facts and figures aren't, aren't going to do it. Yeah. It's just not going to do it. It's not going to engage the audience on an emotional level. And selling is emotion, right? Selling is getting someone emotional about taking action. Yeah, for sure. And, and it's like edutainment, really, because you're you're giving them educational content in an entertaining uh, and engaging way, ideally through things like demonstrations. And actually, a, a little nuance on the demonstration point is that if you can get them to put in their website into the tool, then you've empowered them and you've given them the opportunity to connect the dots themselves. And it's almost like then it's their idea instead of you showing them some insight or some tool that they then will go on and check on their own at some point in the future. If it can be a dynamic kind of um, workshop type of presentation where they're in front of their computers or they have their phone with them and they can uh, use a simple tool themselves and put their own website in, then you're leading them to that conclusion that they make on their own. And that's, again, you, you just gave like, just drop some gold bombs on people. And that's, <laughs> that's what selling is really selling is not convincing someone to do something. That's what everyone thinks selling is. That's not what it is. Selling is exactly what you just said. It is. It's having them come to the conclusion themselves that this is what they need to do, right? And that's how you structure your presentation. If you want, we can go through, I mean, it's, it's really up to you, but I mean, we can go through presentation structure. If you think that would be helpful for folks, we can do that quickly. I think um, that'd be great. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, so let's. we're gonna start at the beginning, right? Now, again, when you're developing your presentation, you what you really wanna do is start at the end, but we're just gonna start at the beginning and work our way through it. So there's three major, pieces to your presentation. The first is the opening, the second is the middle, and then the third or the, the content that sells, and then the, the final piece is to close. Now notice, by the way, um, I'm following, I'm drinking my own Kool-Aid here, right? So there's obviously a bunch of nuances and there's more than three different things, right? But I broke it apart just in this teaching, so it's very easy to understand. Okay, there's a beginning, there's a middle, there's an end, got it. So here's what needs to happen in the beginning. The first thing is the first 30 seconds are mission critical. The first things that come out of your mouth in the first 30 seconds are you must grab the audience by the throat and pull them in. If you don't grab them by the throat in that first 30 to 45 seconds, they're gone. Now, online, they're really gone, right? They're checking the internet. They're clicking you off. If it's in person, they're mentally checking out, or they are checking their phones and things like that. So we've got to grab them with a big promise about, hey, here's what, what you're going to discover here. The second thing in the opening is to let the audience know that they're in the right place. So that is where you talk about them and their situation. So about the pain, the problems that they're going through. Number one, it lets them know that you understand them. But number two, it lets them know, hey, yeah, this is this is absolutely for me. He's he, he or she is describing me. Right. And so now that's further engagement. Then we'll do some tweaks to this as well. Then so we've got our opening, which grabs their attention. We then let them know why uh, that, that it's for them. The next thing we want to do is we want a future pace. And so future pacing means creating a vivid picture in their mind of how great things are going to be, their ideal scenario, if they do what you ask them to do. If they listen to you carefully and do, and that's a line that I always use, by the way, if you do what I ask you to do. Well, what I'm really saying right from the very beginning is when you do what I ask you to do, which at the end is going to be, of course, to buy my, buy my product. Then the second type of future pacing, though, is the negative, right? So we want to use both pain and pleasure to motivate people. And so 
what we do is then we paint a bleaker picture. Hey, this is how things are going to be if you don't listen to me, if you don't follow through, and here are the reasons why. So number one, we've got our opening where we grab their attention. Number two, we let them know that this is for them by talking about them. Number three, we future pace both how great things can be or how dismal they can be and dark they can be if they don't, if they don't um, listen to us. The next thing that you wanna do, which is one of the most important things, is to tell your core story, as you said, the hero's journey. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't have to be a before and after story. Right. So I like I said, I work with a lot of attorneys and financial advisors and those kind of folks. And they're like, I don't have a before and after story like you do, where you said you went from doing three shows a month to 25 shows a month. I don't have to tell that story. That's just one form of core story, the before and after. But you've got you, the, the reason to tell your story is to let the audience know who you are. Right. And this is where you develop a real bond with the audience. You get them to understand why you do what you do, why you're so passionate about helping them. So even though your story is about yourself, it's really tying into, hey, this is why I'm doing this, right? This is, this is, this is how I can help you. And so the story is so important and people gloss over this. They always say to me, well, no one wants to hear my story. They do wanna hear your story. And, 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 and the story is what's going to bond them. Now, I did a very brief 30 seconds of my story, right? If I was selling something, which I'm not, I've got a longer core story, right? But again, the story is really important. So all of that's in the opening, right? That's, that's the opening chunk, as I like to call it, all right? Yeah, that's what, now, that's what positions you as relatable, as... Uh, so, uh, as, as human, as somebody that they want to do business with, you know, if they're even to the point of thinking about that, but at least that's now a possibility because people do business with people, not with faceless companies. Yes, uh, yes, 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 and and yes, right? And that's the way you should be writing your emails too and all of that kind of stuff. That's a whole other topic, right? It's really a personality. They're really buying you. So just a couple tweaks um, to the opening that will really help people. And I, I alluded to it earlier, which is something I call compliance. So if I can get my audience to do what I ask them to do when I ask them to do it throughout the entire presentation. OK, well, what happens is that carries over to the close. Right. So if I can get them to type things into the chat or raise their hand, or answer a poll, or go and do, put, put their website address into a tool, and I keep doing that throughout the presentation, it's, it's, what happens is more that when I tell people to go ahead and buy, they've been trained, literally, to listen, to do what I've told, asked them to do. So you want to have these compliance strategies, like typing, hey, type the word yes, type the letter Y into the chat box. Now take this poll, um, answer this question, and you actually have them do it. The first thing that it does is what I just mentioned. This compliance throughout is very, very powerful. And if, if people want to see just how powerful um, this is, uh, there's a Netflix special called The Push. And The Push is by, uh, was produced by a guy named, by the name of Darren Brown. And Darren Brown is a mentalist out of the UK. And he was, he's the number one star in the UK, not just mentalist or magician, number one star. This isn't about him doing his mentalist show. This is about compliance. And the whole thing is, if we can get somebody, a stranger off of the street, to start taking these little actions which are slightly immoral, right? Just slightly. I mean, like, you wouldn't even think of it as immoral. Can we get them to take a bigger action, a bigger action, a bigger action until we finally get that person to kill somebody? And you've got to watch it. I'm not going to tell you how it ends, but I will tell you that everybody in the show, except for the one person, is an actor. The one person doesn't know it. And it will show you the power of compliance. <laughs> OK, so uh, it's called there, the there were studies about this, in fact, yeah. where people were getting shocked. Uh, yes. and, and some sort of research study, and the person 
was shocking people and and uh they kept turning up the voltage and stuff and it was crazy what they were willing to do to another person yeah so we're now we're not using this in a negative way right so but again it's very <laughs> very powerful it's a very very powerful strategy but overall though the other thing is it keeps your audience engaged right if they're engaged with you so that's why for some of my webinars, and I really should do it for all of them, I'm just lazy about it, is to have a handout that somebody prints out that they need, that where there's fill in the blanks and there's diagrams that they've got to complete because I'm keeping them engaged. And if I can keep them engaged and not surfing the internet, not checking their email, not texting with people, well, what happens is they pay more attention, right? Which allows, and they stay into the presentation a lot longer. So again, there's many, many, many different reasons. So right in the very beginning, you want to get people to comply with you and carry that throughout the entire presentation. Now, there's a couple of things about this that I want to mention that uh, I think are really good examples of this. One is Taki Moore. He always in his webinars uh, has this uh, kind of preliminary get to know you uh, kind of networking portion. He always shows up 15 minutes early instead of just starting the webinar right at the at the top of the hour he'll come and he'll start at 15 minutes early and then as people arrive he'll uh, greet them by name he'll ask where in the world are you and what's the weather like and uh, he'll un yeah. unmute people to be able to give answers and he'll tell people to put these uh, answers into the chat box and everything so that engagement is already primed and ready before he even starts the presentation, which is quite clever. And then another example is John Shoemaker. Uh, both Taki Moore and, Sh and John Shoemaker were past guests of, of this podcast, so I highly recommend, listener, that you you know check out both of those episodes. They're excellent. Uh, so John Shoemaker uh, talks about Netflixing and getting his prospect on a one-to-one -on -one, one -on -one basis, like somebody uh, goes through his appointment funnel, they then get some homework to do prior to the first meeting, which is watch all these videos of me. Right, So they're going to uh, hopefully be so primed when they show up for that, uh, that strategy call, they're ready to sign because they're just floored by all the value that you've delivered in the presentations that they've watched and, and the... Uh, you know, the, the various uh, ar archived or, or replays of past webinars or whatever the homework was. So both of those strategies and both of those examples, are, I think, are fabulous. Yeah, they, they sure are. And th that's my entire, like, um, I call it the virtual event selling machine, which is doing exactly what you just said, including after the person has booked the consultation or the strategy session, having them watch a series of videos, because now as you said, they come almost pre-sold or at the very least pre-framed to buy, yeah. Yeah. right? Um, which is which is so important, so yeah. important. Those are great examples, now, Stefan. Yeah. Now, one other uh, distinction I want to make that I'd, I'd love your input on, I learned this uh, from Chris Voss, who wrote Never Split the Difference, one of my favorite business books and the best book on negotiating. Have you, have you read it, by the way? I have. Oh, it's fantastic. Yeah, it is fantastic. Yeah, I know. I know him personally from uh, the metal mastermind that I'm in. And uh, he also was a past guest on this show. That is one of the best episodes ever. He has this distinction that if you try and get people up on this yes ladder of like seven yeses in the presentation or whatever, and it, like for an audience member or, an, or in a one in one uh, sales uh, negotiation, there are these three types of yeses, and you have to distinguish between the three because you can't treat them all the same. They might say yes seven times, but they're the wrong yeses, so it actually doesn't move them up a ladder. It kind of you know, it just doesn't help you at all. If, if anything, it might derail the whole thing. So the three types of yeses are confirmation yeses, commitment yeses, and counterfeit yeses. So if somebody says uh, yes in terms of can I send you some information uh, can I email you, you know, the, the tech sheet uh, or spec or whatever, and they say yes, they don't mean it necessarily as a commitment yes. They might mean it as a counterfeit yes, like, yes, do that so I can get you off the phone and I'll never <laughs> read your email. Right. So that's a counterfeit yes. And the commitment yes, of course, as it sounds, they're making a commitment no, uh, no matter how small, and it might be as, as small as just 
committing to take one thing they learn from your presentation and apply it in, in their business in the next few days or week. A confirmation yes is where people get stuck and they, they think it's a commitment yes, but, they, but it's not. So that's where they're saying yes, the, the, the prospect or the audience member is saying yes, but they're only confirming or giving like an informational type of yes. Like who here is having a great day? Yeah, right. Okay, how is that helping you sell? sell? How is that moving the conversation oh, forward? I, it's not. Oh, I, I so agree. The example that I give of that exact same thing that you just said, which I can't stand is the speaker, and you've seen, you, we've all seen this speaker, right? This guy goes up there, how many of you guys wanna make some more money? Raise your hand if you wanna <laughs> make more money. Right, you're like, oh my God, really? Yeah, I, again, that doesn't, yeah, does the not ultimate make. confirmation, yes, and, yeah. and, and, and trap. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, exactly, so don't ever do that. Yeah, so so that, that, that that's important. Now, getting someone to agree that this is the problem that they're having that they want to have solved is a great yes, right? Mm -hmm. That's an excellent yes. Here's, do you, do you have this specific problem, right? And you want to solve this problem. That's a, that's a, that's a yes that moves the sale forward. While some of the other yeses, as you talked about what Chris talks about is spot on for sure. Spot yeah. on for sure. Now I, that doesn't mean that you can't or shouldn't use a confirmation yes type of question in your presentation. I, I do it. I, oh, I, I do it too, but that's more to keep the audience engaged. Doesn't yeah. necessarily and also to, yeah. to give me uh, some information that I can use to tailor the presentation. Sure. Like who here consider them, considers themselves an expert in SEO? And that I'm actually trying to get people to say no right. <laughs> to themselves, to not raise their hand right. because then I position myself as the expert and they're, and they're, positioning themselves to learn yeah i mean for sure yeah i mean all of that's super important and you're the only person i've ever i mean i've done a bazillion of these podcasts that was just so insightful um really Stephanie, it really was i mean i was oh, hoping people you. are taking notes like crazy on that because it was great unless you're driving please don't take notes yeah don't take driving. notes <laughs> no but you could pull over though yeah, that's that. That's the smart over. thing to do. You know, you could pull over, open up your Evernote app, speak into it, and get it done. Um, so, the I'm I'm acting like I'm Mr. Technology, by the way, with that. Like you know, like I'm I'm all cool. Like with the I'm not like I don't know anything about any of that stuff. Just sounded good. Okay, so <laughs> the um, the I know you can do it. So the next, so okay, we've got our opening. Now we've got to transition to the centerpiece of the presentation. And I used to call this the teaching portion of the presentation, but that gave the completely wrong idea of what we're supposed to be doing here. Mm. So I changed it to, this is the content that sells section. Now this does not mean that you don't deliver good content. You absolutely have got to deliver valuable content to the audience. However, as we talked about, we don't want to over deliver content. The way to deliver content that sells is to, number one, well, there's many ways, but I'm going to give you two. One is tell people what to do, not how to do it. And by the way, that is extremely valuable information because most people don't know what to do. So if I tell you what to do, the truth is you could go and try to figure it all out on your own, right? If I give you the, here, here's what you need to do. Right now, go and Google it. You could probably figure it out on your own. Yeah. And when I get to my transition to the close, we'll talk about how I use that. So, oh, that's by the, the way, I, this yeah. is such a great example. I got I got to share this. I just learned this from Evan Carmichael, who is one of the best uh, YouTubers out there, and he, he explains that if you do an Instagram live for your podcast interview. So if we were doing this instead of on Skype, we were doing it uh, as an Instagram live. I would bring my audience, you would bring your audience, and we'd both be exposed to each other's audiences, and we would get new followers uh, from that process, and it's genius. And then you take the recording of that, and you post that to YouTube, you post that to all the podcatcher apps, and or to your RSS feed and all that. That's genius. That's an example of what to do, 
but how the heck do I do it? If I've never gone live on Instagram, if I've never had uh, a, a, another, you know, if I've never done a collab on Instagram, I have no clue how to execute on that. So it's a great strategy that leaves an open loop that Evan or somebody who's teaching you the strategies and the process and, and all that, and you're signing up for his course, that's that's where all the magic happens. Yeah, that is, that's, a, that's the perfect example. And by the way, that is great information because now if somebody wants to, they can go figure it out. But if that's a module in the course, it's a lot easier to buy Evan's course than to go try to figure it out on your own, right? Exactly. That's, that's the truth. So the second thing to do, and by the way, I've done it here with everybody. So I said the first 30 seconds are really important. What you say in those first 30 to 45 seconds needs to grab the audience. I gave you all of the reasons why it's important. I even talked about the bad stuff that will happen. They'll turn off. They'll be searching the Internet. They'll be all of that kind of stuff. They'll mentally be checking out. But what did I, didn't I tell you? Well, I didn't tell you what to say or, or how to structure it. Now, when I'm doing this to sell a course, my course on this, one of the modules, one of the bullet points for the first module is, hey, we, and I give you the exact word for word script. All you got to do is fill in the blanks for, for, your, for your opening statement, right? And so I've created, like you said, an open loop in their mind. Well, what do I say? Oh, right. And I can't do that unless I develop my close first, yeah. right? So if I don't know that this is my offer, Right. How do I know what content to put in that creates the open loops and the desire for the stuff I have in my offer? That's why you create your offer in your clothes first. Right. right. And, and open loops also have this great thing of keeping people engaged that you can then uh, it's, it's something that that uh, Neil Strauss refers to as cat string theory. Like you're playing with these strings essentially with with your audience as the cat and it keeps them entertained and engaged and interested. And then you can occasionally close uh, a loop or two, but you are keeping more loops open than you're closing so that uh, the, like you, you, you revisit something. Like you revisited the, the first question I asked, but it took you a little while, and I'm sure it was purposeful. It's genius, yes. like keeping people um, like playfully engaged. Playfully engaged. That, that's it. That's it. Yeah. And again, it's entertaining for the audience as well. It's way more entertaining mentally for them. Yeah. So the first way is useful, but in uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the second way is useful, but incomplete information. So for example, there are, I'm just making this up, but so there are five things that you need to do to make sure your website, uh, uh, is uh, is SEO friendly. Now, we obviously don't have time to go through all five, but let me tell you two of things that you can do immediately, okay? Mm -hmm. Then you actually do teach two things that they can do, right? So I did this with my very, very first private client who we developed a, a teleseminar for. She was an attorney um, selling a program to other attorneys. And so one of her things was, I have seven different things I have in my office uh, that I purposely put there. They're almost subliminal, but when someone walks into my office, they instantly feel like they like me, trust me, and know me. We don't have time to go through all seven, but let me tell you two of them. And so she went and described two of them, and they were the two coolest ones, right? So then when we get to the close, she says, oh, and we have a bonus DVD that we're going to send you. And this bonus DVD is I walk you through the office my office, and I show you the placement of all seven objects. So if I tell you two cool things, and, there, and I told you that there's seven, what do you want to know? You want to know what the other five are, right? <laughs> right. right? And the only way to, to get those, to, to figure out what those are, is to, get, is to get the package. So useful but incomplete, or tell them what to do but not how to do it. And as you mentioned earlier, be entertaining, tell stories. That's really where the power in this is, right? Yeah. So now we've got our opening. We've got our three middle pieces, right? We've, we've done a whole bunch here where we've done the content that sells. Now we've got the close. Before we get to the close, though, let's talk about transitions. What makes a, someone who's really good at this and someone who is choppy? And you were asking, it goes really back to the very first question you asked me, why are some people nervous when they get to the close? Well, they don't know how to transition into it smoothly. 
Mm -hmm. right? So by the way, there's gotta be transitions through each part of your presentation. It's what makes it flow beautifully. So here is, I am going to give everybody the exact transition that they should use for sure. It's the exact one that I use. So you've done the three pieces of content and then you're going to do a review. And here's the words you say, so far you've discovered, or so far we've talked about, by the way, those words so far are really important because so far indicates that there's going to be more teaching to come, more content to come. Right. So, so far you've discovered this, 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 and this. Then you say, I hope, you, but I hope you just get this one thing. Mm -hmm. And then it's whatever the big concept is that they've got to embrace and believe in order for them to buy the thing that you're selling. So for you is, uh, the, yes. So the, so I'm just, again, I'm making this up because I'm, I'm so not an SEO expert, but it could be something like, okay, but I hope you get this one thing, regardless of how your website is set up right now, regardless of what your score is, you can take it, you can correct it, you can get higher rankings, you can get more traffic, you can get more conversions, right? Boom. Yep. Right? Yep. So, okay, great. So the, the next piece of that is, after that is, so the question you're probably asking is, how do I make that happen? Right? Which is the question that, now the beautiful thing about that is even if they're not asking that question, when you say the question you're probably asking or you might be wondering, how do you make that happen is, they automatically have to start wondering that because you planted it in their head. Yep. Don't think about pink elephants. Yeah, Just don't think don't. about pink <laughs> elephants, right? Exactly. <laughs> and so then you say you have two choices. The first choice is to try to figure it on your own, the trial and error method. And again, this goes back to what to do, not how to do it. And by the way, this is a legitimate choice for them. But then I add, that's the slow, painful way and honestly the more expensive way full of just trial and error and pain and trying to figure it out the yeah. second way and lost time and lost time and that's a hundred percent true then then you say the second way is to not reinvent the wheel right is to now that your wording would change here dependent upon what you're selling but it's to is to work with somebody who's already figured it out who's already figured out where all the landmines are all right or to not reinvent the wheel, to follow a proven process, a proven system, right? Yeah. And since you're still watching this, my guess is that you want to get this done fast so you can see results in your bank account as quickly as possible, right? Now, there's a whole bunch there, right? But the, the major piece is giving them the two choices, and then the sub piece of that is since you're still watching this, yeah, it means, right? Well, it doesn't actually necessarily mean that at all, but it sounds very logical. It's so, it, you're, you're, you're framing it. They're like, this is, this is NLP and it's at its finest. It's NLP, yeah. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Yeah. Th that, Neurolinguistic programming, not natural language uh, processing, if you're, <laughs> yeah, right. Right. <laughs> you're listening, wondering which NLP I'm referring to. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. And then you introduce whatever your solution is. So whatever your solution is. So let me show you then whatever it is. Now, it could be your personal solution. We're going to schedule a call, whatever it is. But here's, you're going to like this. This is, again, uh, as you would call it, the, the Neil Strauss, uh, the little string theory. Cat the string cat's... theory. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? Um, is you introduce the solution but then you take it away. So in my case, I would say, so, um, I, and I've got a program that'll show you exactly how to do this. It's called the virtual event selling machine. And I show a picture of it. And then I say, but before we talk about that, let me tell you who this is not for. Okay. And so they're like, well, what? remember, we've had this statement, the summarizing statement. I hope you get this one thing, which they're all excited about. You've done the, the two choices, 
since you're here, you want the, the fast choice so you can get the result that you want as quickly as possible. Here it is. You get excited about hearing about it, and then I pull it away. Yeah, it's the takeaway. It's the takeaway, <laughs> right? And so if you're keeping the audience, they're like, right? They're just like moving with it, right? They're going, they, yeah. they're, like, they're, they're pulling it Or reverse it psychology. That's another way of thinking. Like, like I have a whole page on my site on stephanspencer.com is who I'm not a fit for. Mm-hmm. And that's reverse psychology. Like if, if, if it's your way or the highway, if uh, you like trial and error, if you're not nimble, if uh, you're stuck in, in bureaucracy and red tape and nothing ever gets done, and this is just going to be yet another example of that. I, I'm just riffing about it, but the, I don't remember what I said on that web page, but it's all about the kind of clients I don't want to have, but it's also about like, no, 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 I'm not like that. I, I am somebody who pays on time and uh, right. doesn't... Uh, uh, play mind games with my vendors and so forth. Right. Well, it's kind of going exactly if we want to go back to what Chris Voss talks about. He talks about when a no is actually a yes, right? And yeah. so that's kind of what's happening here. And what you just named is exactly like what you could put in this section, right? Yeah. And so when they say, no, I'm not like that, what they're saying is, yes, I am a good fit for this thing. Correct. Right. It, it's very, very powerful. And so you say all so so this is not for So I would say this is not for you if you're someone who wants to reinvent the wheel. Right. This system has, is perfected. It's been tested. You've seen the results. We've gone through the case study. So if you're the kind of person that's going to screw around with it, then this isn't for you. Well, that's really a benefit. Right. That the system is proven. It's step by step. You don't have to screw around with it. Right. So, and again, that's where you put this in and then you go into your clothes. So that's your transitional segment. And when you have that, it's not teaching. Here's what I have to yeah. sell. Yeah. Right? And, and so, another thing too, a little distinction I've learned is that if you teach and you're selling through teaching with like these micro moments of, of, of selling through, through seeding. Right. An example of this is uh, so Pedro Adao, the challenge guy, uh, has uh, this approach that he does with all his challenges, this five day, 30 day, whatever the challenge is, is um, to make one of the primary prizes be the program he's going to sell so that he can introduce it so early on that <clears throat> everybody's aware of it uh, from the beginning instead of him waiting till it's 80% into the, into the program of five day challenge, that would be day four. No, he's already introduced it on day one because he made it a prize. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, and when he gave it away be well before his, uh, offer, uh, four days in as well. So that well, nobody it holds off and it, thinks what it is, all of that exactly. it seems very, very, it doesn't seem forced. Yeah, exactly. Right? It's, it's, but, that's brilliant. but another that's, distinction, you got to give the prize away before you make the offer because otherwise people will be holding out hoping that they'll win instead of buying it. Right. That's that's brilliant, man. Um, I That's brilliant. I'm, I'm going to use that. That's awesome. <laughs> um, yeah. And so now we go into the close. Now you introduce what the what it, whatever it is. A couple little things about the, the actual offer. Uh, the first thing is, and again, it's this is like selling 101, and I hesitate to mention it, but in reviewing people's webinars and working with clients, they still, I still see even fairly sophisticated people not really know the difference between features and benefits. So <clears throat> they'll say, well, uh, there's there's six um, there's six video modules. Uh, you get PDFs, you get this, you get handouts. Okay, <laughs> right? Nobody cares. Got, yeah, nobody cares. You do have to tell them what what the thing is, but you want to talk about the benefits of it. But more important than this, I call it the hierarchy of persuasion. At the lowest level, we have features, right? Now, I'm not saying don't tell them what the features are, but that's not the offer. The feature is just a piece of it. Right. Then you've got benefits, right? So here are the benefits of those features. Then you've got outcomes, here is the outcome of these or outcomes of these benefits, yeah. right? Or the benefits of the benefits. Or the benefits of the benefits. 
But then you've got the highest level, which almost nobody gets to, which is transformation. Transformation is how I'm going to be different, how my life is going to be different from right. this program. How right? your so identity will shift. How your right? identity will shift. Exactly. And almost right. like if you're trying to teach somebody to stop smoking, their identity will be as a non-smoker. They won't as a have to stop smoking. They are a non-smoker as their identity from that point forward. Yeah, and that's different than the the outcome of not smoking. Right. Right? It, it, it's different, and it's more powerful, by the way. Yeah, and it it's sticks. More powerful, right? And so that's what really moves people. The uh, A mistake that I see people, especially when they are selling a, when they're selling, even if it's a free strategy session, is that, they are or a consultation is that they're not selling the value of the strategy session. They're selling, they're, they're talking about the value of working with them, the end result of working with them as opposed to just the value of the strategy session, right? So we're selling the value of the strategy session. And then on the strategy session, we sell them on actually working with us right? Hiring us. So I work, again, I work with a lot of attorneys. And so I see their presentation. They're like, I work with a lot of estate planning attorneys. They're talking about, well, once you get the estate plan, here's everything that's no, we're not selling the estate plan quite yet. We're selling them on just meeting with us. Right? So we've got to sell the value of that. And then the other mistake that I see, especially professional services providers make is not having bonuses. Right. So bonuses are really important, even in a you're selling a, a consultation. Um, and so information is a great bonus. So I, ha I had a client who does websites and the guy's really super smart. I mean, it runs a real does a great job with with a, with dentists in specific. And I was asking him, he had hired me to do a consultation with him about his presentation. And his whole thing was. Well, we, my, my offer is, is they get a free strategy session. That's it. That's what the offer is. And I said, well, tell me more about that. And he says, well, the first thing that we do is we go and analyze their current website and we come up with a 25 page report. Then we give them the 25 page report and then we get on a call with them. One of my team members gets on a call with them, goes through the reports to show them where the hole is. And we talk about the different ways that they can fix it. He wasn't describing any of that in his thing he was just like we're going to have this consultation call I'm like no you've got to describe all of it i said so the bonus could be that they're getting the the 25 page pdf that could that could be a bonus i've got another client who's an attorney uh, and she created an information product that she gives to people when they come for when they show up for the uh the strategy session which further positions her as an expert so bonuses are, are, are really super important. And even if you're off, this is like a pet peeve of mine, even if you're offering something for free, it has a value. So you're not offering a free consultation. You're offering a consultation that has a value of X, right? And you're offering it on a complimentary basis for the first 10 people or whatever. It's not a free consultation. Your time is valuable. It's not free. There's a value to it. This is a nine. So if you charge a thousand dollars or two thousand dollars an hour and you're doing a, an hour consultation, that's a two thousand dollar consultation. Now, you're not saying I don't believe in using what they call marketing license, which is also lying. Right. If you don't sell it, don't say I normally sell this for two thousand dollars. You, you say, <laughs> right. Well, you see that, too. And the person yeah, doesn't I sell hate it that. Right. I, I don't, you don't need to do that. You can say this has a two thousand dollar value, but you get it for free. So, again, and then the final thing about this is, especially if you're selling um, a, a strategy session. Is to make sure that you are, um, again, selling the value of the strategy session, what's going to happen on it and the outcome of that strategy session, whether the person decides to work with you or not. If you do that, then what happens is you book a lot more strategy sessions. Then if you follow up with, hey, you've got this homework you've got to do before 
we had the strategy session, you're in really good shape when it comes to closing one on one. Oh, that's fabulous. Yeah. You know, I've never thought about offering a bonus or multiple bonuses for booking a strategy session with me. That is genius. I've offered bonuses on webinars for uh, programs that I've sold, uh, online courses and, and so forth. But yeah, for a consultation call or strategy session, that is genius. Uh, yeah, and I it works great. And you, by the way, you're probably already doing it. Right. So do you analyze the person's site ahead of time or something like that? You can give them a P that's a bonus, right? right? So it doesn't have to necessarily be something that you need to create. A lot of it is like with, with the guy I was talking about, we both know him, Tom, brilliant guy. Um, he was already doing all of this. He just wasn't framing it right. Right. right? <laughs> so you might already be doing it, but again, you've got to, or he wasn't packaging back you. Any one of those books can be a bonus. Yeah. So like I could package something that I, I just normally do as part of my strategy session or part of my initial consult where I'll, I'll pull up, uh, with, uh, let's say majestic, I'll, I'll pull up their trust score, their site, their, their, uh, important score. It's called citation flow. And, and their trust score is 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 a trust flow, and I'll I'll just compare the two, and I'll say, look, you're more important than you are trusted, and that's a problem because blah 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 blah. I could uh, position that as or and package it as a a deliverable, where maybe I I print that out as a that that one screen as a PDF. They probably don't have a, a paid account with Majestic, so that's a lot of information they're going to get. Uh, for free that they wouldn't normally have access to. There you go. Done. And, and you're already yeah. doing it. Yeah. You're already yeah. doing it. Right. So yeah, that's, that's what everyone's got to think about. When I say create bonuses, sometimes people are thinking, ah, crap, I got to create something else. Right. But oftentimes you don't have to create something else. You're already doing it. You're just not yeah. framing it um, correctly. Right. 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 And one of the key things that you want to achieve through bonuses is to amp up the urgency and the scarcity. And like, you're not going to get these things if you don't take immediate massive action and sign on the dotted line or, or, uh, buy this program. Now you, you can certainly buy it next week or next month, but these bonuses are for right now. Yeah. And especially if it's again, if it's true. So, um, I, so I, it was interesting, and I've got to actually clean this up in, 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 in my course because I've gotten the same question twice, um, once from a financial advisor and once from an attorney. I talk about scarcity just like you talked about, and the person says, well, I don't feel right about saying that I only have seven openings if that's not true. And I just, I just use that as an example. So I don't, again, I don't say to say that you have seven openings if you have more than seven openings. I, that's, again, that feels creepy and wrong, right? right? right. But you do have limited openings, for yeah. sure. I, I have limited openings. Or you can say I've opened up 14 slots on my calendar. Once those 14 slots are taken, that's it. So you can make it legitimate. Or you can simply say, um, um, I have limited uh, oppor limited spots to do these strategy sessions um, for free because I am, I'm working with clients all of the time. So, and I use the word obviously, which is another very powerful word. Obvious. Anytime you use the word obviously or naturally, um, people will tend to agree with whatever you say after it. It's just built in. So if I say obviously because I'm working with clients, I only have a limited amount of spots, right? So if you want one of them, so you can solve this problem that you're having right now, right? You want to take advantage of it. Yeah, that's great. Another another example of NLP at, wor at work. Now, uh, bonuses are also great for uh, sweetening the deal with, let's say, a, a, an online course or a group coaching program or something that you're pitching in the middle or, or towards the end of, of a webinar or uh, a stage presentation. And that's where you get that urgency and scarcity uh, kind of maxed out so that they don't sit on it and think, yeah, I'll actually maybe I'll wait to the end of this uh, three-day event before I make my decision. Or maybe I'll, I'll make a decision about this next week after I'm back in the office and I'm kind of settled in because that's just going to uh, turn into nothing. <laughs> 
<laughs> it is. And uh, again, you just said a mouthful, Stefan. Uh, the, uh, let me just give you one distinction here. So you have a fast action bonus is what you're talking about, right? So take yeah. something that's going to get people to take immediate action. One of the keys to making that fast action bonus work, of course, is to make it really a great, something great that they want. If the bonus is good enough, oftentimes people will buy just to get the bonus. However, here's the big distinction. You want to anchor it in. You want to get that audience to believe before you introduce a fast action bonus that that the deal that they that you've just described is the final deal. Hmm. Okay? It's a slight distinction, but it shouldn't just roll. It should be like, so you've got your final price drops or whatever it is. This is the final thing. You've already added in bonuses. So they think that that's it. And people should already start buying right? Then you lay the bomb on them of the other fast action bonus uh, of the final, the real final fast action bonus. So the way that I do it is in this virtual event selling machine program that I have, um, that program does sell for 1997, but I've alluded to, well, now you're going to have all of these, um, strategy sessions scheduled. How do you close them? I've alluded to that throughout my presentation. So the final bonus, my fast action bonus is if you order today or if you order within the next 15 minutes, depending upon the scenario we're presenting, you get not only this course at, at, a, at a discount for 1997, I'm going to give you my consultations that close course, which is also 1997 for free. And that creates a stampede because I've created number one, I've created the desire for the bonus during the present, unbeknownst to them that there's even going to be this bonus, I planted it in their head that, well, man, I, I got to close all of these strategy sessions. And then I say, boom, you get this extra thing and it goes crazy. It just goes crazy. By the way, you'll appreciate this because I, I've tested this. I used to have it. So it was a two for one special, meaning you buy the consultation, you buy the, the virtual event selling machine and you get consultations that close for free. Right. And I packaged it like that and it did OK. But when I made the little tweak of exactly what I just said is, hey, here's the final offer. And then adding this. Now, it's not a two for one. It's now a bon bonus. By the way, it's the same price. It's the same package. It's the same everything. Right. No changes to the membership. Web, nothing. Right. It's the same thing. But the, the framing of it made a, a, a huge, huge difference. So I closed and then I added this extra fast action bonus and that just creates. So I recently did one, you know, so the program's $2,000 and we did, um, what did I close on that one? It was like, I'm going to fudge the numbers a little bit, but it was like 60% closing on a $2,000 on a webinar. Um, wow. And again, it was from just that those that little tweak so yeah those all, little tweaks those little nuances are so important like i'm i am a detective when it comes to figuring these things out like i have given a lot of presentations on stages at conferences and i, I always treat it as a, a learning opportunity to try and figure out what to tweak next and one thing i found out was if i bring a bunch of books with me to give away like the big one the art of seo that uh, that one, this one here, <laughs> the the really intimidating one that's a thousand pages. Um, if I keep that to myself, that I have a big bunch of books. If I give away a copy, if I say, "Oh, uh, you know, I'm the co-author of this book, and who wants a copy of it?" and then you know, people raise their hand, and they're like, "Who wants it enough to come and get it?" I learned this one. Uh, from uh, Dave Van Hoos <laughs> and to get people mm -hmm. storming the stage to get be first to get the book. And then I say, well, I actually have one more and who wants this one? And by then everybody's trained to go run and to the front of the stage to get the book. And that's all I do for, for that piece. But then I say, oh, and um, I can't give you all a, a free copy of The Art of SEO, but what I can do is I can give you all a free digital copy of Google Power Search, which is my smaller book, like, and, and, and who wants that? And you're like, everybody goes crazy. It's like, uh, it's yeah. like an Oprah moment, right? Uh, and you get a car and you get a car and you get right. a car. You all get a car. <laughs> right. And, and, and so then I figured out that if I offer to give my PowerPoint 
as well, but I give, I offer it a little bit into the presentation where they're already starting to take notes and like, wow, this is like value bomb central. This is amazing. Like you may, you don't have to take some as much copious notes. You don't have to take pictures of every slide. I'll give you my PowerPoint deck. And here's another nuance is if you text 33444 with the keyword Googled, and then I put that on the screen and I whip out my phone. It's all NLP and I'm like showing the phone, like, who, you know, whip out your phone. And I, I, I'm basically commanding them, you know, or whatever the compliance thing, right? And I'm showing them the phone and they're pulling their phone out and they're texting it. Instead of emailing, instead of going to a website address, using that short, short code, it just seems to do the best. And then combining the PowerPoint with the digital copy of the of, of Google Power Search. And then at the end, this is another nuance that just like blew the doors off. Like this was just incredible. I got 100% compliance of the entire room opting in, giving their email address. Well, as I said, all right, I've got a, a couple hundred pounds of books to give away, <laughs> which is probably about 30. Uh, and you know, I, I maxed out my, my, my luggage and all that to, uh, to bring these with me. You just need to show me that you have texted 33444 with the keyword Googled or whatever the keyword was for that presentation. Wow. And so they've done, I don't ask for it at the end. I don't say, like, like people are ready to show me, but I don't need it at that point because I know they've already complied. So oh, all those awesome. little nuances uh, added together, stacked on top of each other, I get the entire audience's email address and can then put them into drip campaigns and provide, you know, follow up. It's yeah, awesome. what was really interesting is you kind of did what I just described, which was the, making them believe that the final thing that you did, like, oh, I got one more book to give away. And then, okay, that's basically it. Well, I got... Right. You kind of did that <laughs> piece. Yeah. And that makes a difference. It, it makes it makes a huge it makes a huge difference in, in the results that you get for sure. Yeah. yeah. So I know we're, we're at time here and this was just a uh, value bomb after value bomb. Thank you so, so much, Dave. So if somebody wants to work with you or they want to buy your courses or be part of your masterminds or whatever uh, you, you have and, and they, they want to learn from you and apply uh, your, your principles, where should we send them and what, what, what should they do? Yeah, well, first of all, Stefan, thank you so much for having me on. I can't believe the time went by that fast. I just looked at the clock. I'm like, wow, we already did that. <laughs> uh, that's crazy. Uh, so thank you so much for having me on. I really appreciate it. I think the easiest thing to do, I do have the book Sales Stampede. Uh, if people are interested in that, uh, it's a hardcover book that we send you. Um, it's just shipping and handling. Then go to davedbook.com. That's Dave, then D-E-E, book.com. Uh, if you're not interested in the book, uh, the best thing to do is just go to DaveD.com, and I've got a really killer free report on virtual selling. And it's again, it's 100% free, and that's the best way uh, to, to, to get involved and, and see if I'm a good fit for you. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much, Dave. This was so fun, so fun. and you're such a, super a genius. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, th this is great stuff. So I hope, listener, that you take this and you apply some of this in your business or your, in your career because this could make you so much money. And as I learned from Anil Gupta, that if you aren't showing up powerfully in the world to uh, share your gift, people are dying because you're not doing that. Right. So that's actually something that Anil t told my wife, Orion, one time when she was talking to him about like, well, I, I know I should be doing my podcast or whatever it was that she was talking about. And, and wow, what a powerful positioning. So people are suffering because you aren't showing up powerfully in the world, sharing your gift. So get out there and we'll catch you on the next episode of Marketing Speak. I'm your host, Stefan Spencer, signing off.